Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, we're going to continue exploring how we can accelerate transformer inference on Intel CPUs with the Optimum library. In a previous video, I showed you how to do this with the ONNX tools. And in this video, we're going to do the same with the Intel OpenVINO tools. And we're going to work with a vision transformer. Okay, let's get to work. Here, we're going to optimize our model for the Intel Xeon architecture. So uh, if you have one of those CPUs laying around, you're good to go. Maybe that's what you have on your PC. So perfect. Um, but to maximize the, the results, um, I'm going to use a fairly recent one um, based on the Ice Lake architecture. And an easy way to do this is to fire up a C6i instance on Amazon EC2 because those instances are based on this particular architecture, uh, which have, uh, I guess, the most bells and whistles for uh, deep learning optimization. Okay, so this is what I've done. Uh, I started a C6i8XL instance on EC2. Um, this particular size has uh, 32 vCPUs, so 16 cores. Uh, should be enough to get some good results. And I use an Ubuntu 20 AMI to do this, okay? And so, of course, we have a few setup steps to, to go through. So let's just go quickly through that because that setup can be a little frustrating sometimes. So update all the packages, install pip. Why it's not on, on this particular AMI is beyond me, but okay. Make sure you have the latest uh, pip version because otherwise it seems to have issues locating the latest version of OpenVINO. Don't ask me why. Uh, make sure you have the latest version of pip in the path, okay? And then, of course, install virtual env and create a virtual environment for OpenVINO. Uh, activate it, okay? And then we can install our requirements. And the requirements are these. So uh, here I'm installing the latest version of PyTorch at the time of recording, and I want to install the CPU version. Uh, I need Torch Vision because we're going to work with a computer vision model, so there are some related objects. Of course, I need transformers and datasets. I need um, the Optimum library with uh, the OpenVINO and NNCF, uh, which is the Neural Network Compression Framework. Uh, which is part of the Intel collection of tools. And I'm also installing the evaluate library because I'm going to score uh, the models against a, a test set and evaluate is an easy way to do that. Uh, that's a hugging face library, by the way. And I need scikit-learn uh, to get uh, some extra dependencies, okay? So install all that stuff and you're ready to go. Once we've installed our dependencies, we can switch to the code. So let's look at this script. Uh, we start from this model, which is a model that I uh, fine tune with AutoTrain. And the, the particular architecture here is a vision transformer. Okay, so um, that's a popular model for image classification. And this one has been fine tuned on the Food 101 dataset. And that's part of a, another video if you want to go and check that out. But, you know, it's not so important for now. So a vision transformer already trained for image classification on this Food 101 dataset, okay? So as usual, I can load the model, load the feature extractor. And the first thing I wanna do is to create a pipeline from this uh, original model so that I can get a baseline on its performance, okay? And as mentioned, the, the evaluate library is a good way to do this. So first I'm gonna load 10% of the validation set for the Food 101 data set. So, you know, a few thousand images. And I'm gonna load the accuracy metric, which is what I'm gonna use for comparison here. Create an evaluator and then with this evaluator, I can compute the accuracy of this model on this data set, uh, passing also, of course, the name of the column that contains the labels and the mapping between 
uh, class names and uh, class labels, right? And the reason why I'm putting this in a function is because I'm going to reuse it a couple of times, right? That's it. So uh, there we go. We evaluate the pipeline and we print out the results, okay? So that's going to give me the total amount of time uh, required by the model to predict the test set and the, uh, the average latency. Okay, so let's run this first uh, benchmark. I want to make sure I'm in my uh, environment here. Okay, let's just run this, see how it goes. So this is the this is the data set we're going to use. So yeah, about uh, 2,500 images. So let's give it a minute to do what it needs to do, and we'll look at the results. Okay. So once the evaluation loop is complete, we see this took about 87 seconds, and the average latency was 34 milliseconds per image. Okay. So that's the baseline. Let's keep track maybe of those numbers. We can save them here. All right. And we'll compare later. So now let's move on to optimizing the model. Okay. So the first step is to create an, um, an OpenVINO quantizer. Okay. And an OpenVINO configuration. Uh, we'll stick with the default configuration here. Uh, we'll print it out to see what's actually in that object, um, and and you know we'll be able to find more details on the OpenVINO website if we want to tweak those parameters. Okay, so create a quantizer object, and then we need to grab a calibration dataset that the quantizer uses during the quantization process. Here I'm going to go with a thousand images from the training set. Uh, I think default is 300. Okay, so you don't need a lot of data here. Then um, I need to process those images, and this really has nothing to do with the quantization process. It's really, uh, you know, torch and torch vision stuff where I need to apply to the data set the same pre processing um, uh, that was used during the training. Uh, process and that really means um, you know normalizing the images according to the the mean and the standard deviation values present in the feature extractor I need to resize them and center crop them um, so that's really it okay um, again this has nothing to do with quantization it's just to make sure that images are um, similar to the ones that were used during the training process okay um, next, I need to define um, transform function, okay, uh, to apply those uh, transformations to the data set. And this is what we do here. And next, I need to define uh, a data collator function because, of course, the model expects uh, the input features in a certain format. Uh, so uh, we need um, we need a, a value called pixel a variable called pixel values, and we need a variable called labels. Okay, so that's what this function does. It will just present the images in the expected format. Okay, again, uh, this is vanilla PyTorch. It doesn't have to do anything with quantization. Okay, so once we have the data in the format that the model expects, now we can call the quantization object passing the config the data set the data collator and deciding where to save the um, the quantized model right and we save the feature extractor as well in the same place so that it's just convenient to load it again from uh, from the same uh, folder the same local folder okay and once we've done that then we evaluate the quantized model and this is a very easy way. Um, it's very similar to the transformers library, except we use it instead of using the auto model for image classification object, we use the OV model for image classification object. 
to load the model and then of course we create a pipeline and we evaluate it okay and we're gonna see our results right so let's run this thing completely and we can compare the results okay so let's just do this there we go it's going to take a couple of minutes i'll pause the video and then we can compare the results okay after a few minutes the whole process is complete and we can see our results here let's just grab this and compare to our previous numbers so first of all we see accuracy is almost the same we have a tiny drop but that's really really minimal um we went from 87 seconds to 68 seconds so how much is that um let's figure it out 68 okay yeah that's about 20 20 percent faster so that's uh that's a very good uh that's a very good speed up for almost no loss inaccuracy and now our latency is 27 milliseconds so that's a that's a pretty nice speed up but that's not the only benefit that we get um, if we look at the the original model we can see which is this one um, and look at its size we see this model is about yeah, 344 megabytes and if we go into that quantized model directory where we saved the quantized model so we can see the model is now 85 megabytes which is quite smaller right 334 divided by 85 so it's almost four times smaller okay so that's uh, that's very significant because it means we're going to use far less memory to load it and um, and we could potentially load it on uh, much smaller devices as well right um, and so that's really what open vino is all about shrinking those models to speed them up but also to make it possible to load them on smaller uh, devices maybe even you know edge devices okay. And so that's what I wanted to show you today. I'm sure we'll come back to model optimization because it's a, it's a really fascinating topic and it's so important for production. Uh, but that's it for today. So I hope this was useful. I hope this was fun. And until I see you next time, keep rocking.